So I gave you a little sneak peek of this this week, and I have to admit, you know, when I came into Witch Queen, I was a little bit concerned because there were many things with the Hunter that were changing. For instance, Heart of the Pack, which I use a lot on my bottom tree, was going away. So obviously I'm concerned with that. But now that I've got to play around with Void 3.0 and with some of the possibilities with future aspects and fragments, I actually think it could be better than what we had in the previous. And with a Hunter, you can pretty much have multiple options to be able to do high-end DPS or to control the battlefield or to do ability spam. And I'll talk about some of that coming up. So first off, to enable this particular build, I'm going to be using Orpheus Rig. And you're like, Orpheus Rig? I mean, who's used that in like two to three years? Orpheus Rig used to be an overpowered Hunter exotic. It was basically easy button for Hunter on Void. Basically, you would put that down and you would get your super back and you would just drop a ton of orbs constantly. I can remember doing the Argos encounter in Eater of Worlds. And basically, if you stood in a certain place, you could basically allow your other teammates to get almost infinite supers to take Argos down quickly. So again, they nerfed that and most of the things that regenerate supers on all the characters to only do 50%. But with recent changes to Void 3.0, it's back on the menu, boys. So in Void 3.0, they've changed Nightstalker a great deal. So obviously Deadfall is the same as Deadfall usually is, right? Basically Deadfall goes over a longer period of time and extends over a longer distance. Now, along with that, now, the big difference it does is that it actually draws in characters closer, and it's actually pretty dramatic, which will allow you to kill them really easily. The other thing with Mobius Quiver is that Mobius Quiver now, instead of you sitting in the air forever, especially in PvE where you can get one shot and GMs or things like that, it basically lets you put two volleys of three arrows that do a ton of damage when they hit and can also do great add control by going over a wider area. They also, there's a delay, so those two volleys, since your super lasts for so long, you can actually do the one, kind of settle down, and then do the other one without sitting in the air forever. And you don't get quite as high in the air with the animation, so it's a lot safer in these cases. Now, with Orpheus Rig, one of the things it does is with Deadfall, it actually will allow you, when you have kills for things tethered to the tether, you will actually get your super energy back up to 50%, which is really good. Now, you can use that for basically getting super regen, or when you use Moby's Quiver, it actually gives you a third set of three arrows. And so that, again, allows you to either, you know, cover the battlefield with tethers all over the place, right, for a short period of time, or do a ton of damage. I'll show you this as an example, for instance. When I'm using this against in this Lost Sector, I just get the first set of arrows out, and I'm doing a ton of damage. I've seen other videos where people have said that you've gotten over 200,000 damage with these set of three arrows. And so again, it gives you a lot of flexibility in that you can basically control the Battlefield Deadfall and get most of your, your super back. Or you can do a ton of damage to individual targets or control in different areas of the battlefield because you, do, you have three shots with Orpheus Rig, a wider field for a shorter period of time. This is going to give you a lot of flexibility and this base build I'm going to give you can be used either way so that during a raid or during other activity at any point you can change which subclass tree you're using in certain scenarios. So now let's talk about aspects and fragments. So from an aspects and fragments uh, point of view first off I'm going to use Trapper's Ambush which allows you to add weaken to your visible smoke. So it works very much like your smoke worked in the past. It allows you to get invisible but it also puts weaken on enemies that get hit by it. And it has a pretty wide radius versus the original smoke bomb. Then I'm gonna use Stylus Executioner, which basically makes you invisible and gives you true sight when you defeat enemies that are either weakened, suppressed, or volatile. And again, with the previous weaken that you have from your smoke bomb that I brought up earlier, that's an easy way to get that on a fairly frequent basis. And when you attack the next enemy, your next melee attack against an enemy makes them weak as well. I'm gonna use Echo of Expulsion, Void abilities cause targets to explode. I'm going to use Echo of Reprisal. Final blows when you're surrounded by enemies grant bonus super energy. And then I'm going to use Echo of Remnants. Grenades linger longer. So the effects in your grenades linger longer once you put them down. So think about how these synergize. So you've weakened opponents with your smoke bomb. And when you kill them, with avoidability, they explode that adds super energy and damages other enemies. In a huge area that has adds, so if you have a bunch of adds around you while you're doing this, you also get a good amount of super energy back when they die. And 
your grenades last longer. In this case, I'm gonna use Void Wall. I've tried the various uh, grenades. If for some reason you haven't unlocked grenades on your character, the other grenades that are from other characters, you should go ahead and watch this video I have where I tell how you can do that because it's a step that a lot of people miss. Void Wall specifically covers a nice area and lasts a long time and has good uptime as far as regen. So for me using this build, that's the one. You can use something else, but for me, it was the most effective. Next, I'm gonna get into mods. I'm gonna use Harmonic Siphon, where you get orbs from multi-kills with a void weapon. And as you know, it's more difficult to get orbs these days, which would allow you to actually get your super back quicker because of the changes that came in weapon crafting. But with this, if you use the right weapons, you can get your orb very quickly on a frequent basis which again will allow you to do that. The other thing it'll allow you to do in the future, and I put two of these on by the way, not just one, I put two. The other thing that this allows you to do in the future is there's a fragment called Echo Starvation, which I cannot get yet, but that aspect basically, if you get an orb of power, you get Devour. So just think about that. As you look at this build, think about in the future if you could add the ability to get Devour, which you can only get on Warlocks before. So you can go invisible, you can weaken enemies, you can basically do all these things that we like to do on a hunter, but you can also get the uptime and devour. I just, I can't even believe what that's going to look like in the future. I'm also going to put Seeking Wells on this particular uh, piece of armor, primarily because it's arc anyway. I could have used something else, but it does come in handy if you're on the battlefield, if you're kind of moving around, if you're invisible. If you can get within vicinity of your wells, which I'll talk about in a little bit about how to generate wells, it will come in handy. Then I put on Grenade Kickstarter. This allows you to get grenade energy after you fully extend your grenade. So again, that's something that'll get your grenades back quicker, which helps with this build. I also put on Fauna Might. When you do damage with a weapon that matches the burn, in this case Void, you do additional damage. And again, you get that just from picking up Elemental Wells of your type. Then I put on Thermoshock Plating. This is a, I, don't th I think this is a fairly new mod. This is a really unique one that kind of caught me off guard. Basically, it allows you to get both arc and solar resistance on your chest piece, similar to how you get the, you can put a, you can put a mod in today that gives you whatever burn that particular piece of armor. Well, think about this. If you have a void piece of armor and then you put this on, you basically have damage resistance to all three burns, which get really helpful in GMs and a lot of endgame content. So I would definitely use this. It's on the seasonal pass on the artifact. Get that as soon as you can. I put on Concussive Dampener. That's just common sense. Concussive Dampener takes damage away. That's area of effect. You know, that will come in handy in any sort of endgame content. I put on Reaping Wellmaker. This is pretty standard for any of the builds I've done in the past when I'm trying to generate elemental wells because basically, whenever you use your class ability and then you get a weapon kill, you have a void well created. And because you're dodging all the time, your dodge is your class ability, you're going to be doing this all the time so you can get your smoke bot, ma'am, so you can get invisible. So as part of this build, this is a... This is just a super easy way to make sure you always get wells. I put on Fada Wisdom. When I pick up those elemental wells, I get super regen, which basically takes your intellect up to 100 for a protracted period of time. It actually lasts for a while. Then I'd use Well of Tenacity. Well of Tenacity was okay before, but now it's been really buffed up, where when you pick up a well that's a void well, you basically get 50% damage protection for a short period of time. Now, it's not a ton of time, but it's the perfect thing to use. So let's say you go invisible to go get that that well. And you're on your way to get well because it gives you other benefits during that time. Once you get the well or your invisible runs out, this will give you additional damage resistance before you can go invisible again potentially. So this is a real game changer and it's really helped me in some of the content I've been doing early on in the season. I also put on overload grenades. So first off, these are great against overload champions. They can come in really handy, especially if you don't wanna have to carry every mod to do overload and all the champions, but they also disrupt enemies lower the damage output as far as ability regen. And now that we have Lucent Hive, that's one thing that's gonna be helpful because my guess is, I haven't tested this out yet, but it's going to help against ability regen as well on them, which will probably help in taking some of them down when it gets a little bit difficult. And then I run Distribution. I run this just as a kind of a, I have a spot for it, but this does reduce all your ability cooldowns when you do your class ability. And again, that's your dodge, which you'll be doing all the time. So then let's talk about what weapons to use. now. With this build, if you want to take full advantage of it, you're going to want to use void weapons whenever possible. And you'll probably just need to, with your other people in your fire team, you'll need to have them help out with making sure they account for match game or other things like that. In this particular video that I've been using, I've been using Deathbringer and a blinding grenade launcher called Truth Teller. 
primarily generate orbs on multi-kills. Because again, Deathbringer kills a lot of enemies all at once. And if you're good with a grenade launcher, you can typically get multi-kills pretty easy with a grenade launcher. Again, use the weapons that match the mode you're in. So for instance, another one would be Le Monarch. So bows are important this season. Le Monarch would be a good weapon to use because with its poison damage, it's going to do damage to a lot of things a lot of time and take things out around the same time. So again, it'll probably generate orbs and it's just a good control weapon. Also gnawing hunger because you can also use auto rifles this season to disrupt champions. So again, just think about what weapon and what you need for a particular mode. You don't have to stick a void, but the primary reason I do the void is so I can get Fauna Might benefits and I can also generate orbs, which are going to allow me to get my super back quicker, but are also going to allow me eventually to be able to get Devour once I get this other fragment opened up. So really the key to this build is using Deadfall to kind of group up your enemies, first off so they're easy to kill, but also so you can regen super that way. Then your Smoke Bomb makes them invisible, makes you invisible, and weakens your opponents. Then with your Grenade and Void Weapon kills, you're basically regening your super again because you're going to get orbs from those. And also, while you're near a bunch of adds, when you kill them, you're going to get super energy because you're surrounded. And then at the end, the exploding enemies spread the party to the others and just continue the fun. And like I said, when I was testing this out, I was getting my tether back. Again, you have to be in something that has a lot of adds, but there's a lot of content that does. But I was getting my tether back in 30 to 40 seconds on a regular basis while keeping myself protected, while doing extra damage to things. Again, in, in depending on the content that you're in, this will allow you to control the battlefield, to stay alive, and to go invisible where you need to to help your teammates. Because often, when you're in GM or endgame content, you do need this from time to time because people get stuck in bad positions and only a hunter can bail them out. And again, as you're generating elemental wells, again, from constantly dodging and getting kills, you'll get super regen, you'll get damage resistance, and you'll get extra void damage, which will help the cycle continue. As you can tell, this build lets me stay alive, go invisible, to get the wells, and kill tons of enemies that are disrupted, tethered, and weakened, while I regen super so I can do it again. This allows me, to, again, to control the battlefield for my fire team. Later on, if I want to switch to DPS, I can pretty easily do that. I can switch over to Moby's Quiver, and do quite a bit of damage to help out. Or if I'm trying to help out DPS because I want to put a buff for the rest of my fire team's weapons, then I can do that with the length of deadfall if placed in the right location. So again, I have a ton of options to either control the battlefield, stay alive, get my super back, or I can do DP, extra DPS myself or help my teammates do extra DPS. So again, this is a great base build. I plan to expand this a little bit as other things open up. I don't have all of the artifact mods opened up yet at the end, and I, there are some there, some suppressive ones that I'd like to try out with this build to see what they do. I'm also looking forward to getting Devour opened up with the extra fragments, so check back because I think these builds are gonna actually be key builds to be able to use in endgame content. I know hunters aren't always welcome, and I know sometimes you have to just rely on Omnoculus or other exotics like this, but I think Orpheus Rig, again, is back on the menu and can basically play a key role on any fire team. That's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like it. Subscribe to my channel, jump in my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.